Grace Grace with Nina Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to the broadcast today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the prison of offense. How much is it? Is it so bad for us when we pick up offenses? It is a prison. It can and be it's so such easy a prison. To do, right? Because you can pick up a, an offense and you can hold that grudge and hold that offense for eternity. And I'm telling you, it is doing nothing for you, but in fact, it's blocking your blessings. It's causing you to not get blessed. It's having all kinds of trouble that you are really bringing upon yourself because you're picking up an offense. You're the one who's drinking the poison and expecting it to hurt the other person. Well, with, with offenses, like you, if you think about it, the, you know, the Lord's Supper is something that we don't take lightly. You know, when, when you take the bread, which is the body, and drink the, the cup, which is, represents the blood, the Bible says before you do these things, if you have an offense, stop. Stop right there. And go and make it right with your brother. Now, or your sister, whoever has offended you, go make it right. Now, I'm, you know, sometimes we can't make it right because this person is, you know, has gone on to be with the Lord uh, or this person. Or they're is, dangerous. They're or dangerous or something. We're not saying you yeah. have to go get into that kind of muck yeah. and mire. But you, when you do all you know to do. Right. And, you know, if you're, and also it can just be really praying for them as well, because there's, there's, there's some things in my life that go way back to childhood and that um, actually the people don't want to, you know, that might think you're on a, my, my journey because they don't want to know the Lord and there's things like that. And so when there's people who kind of like just say, just, we don't want to hear about it, stay out of our lives. Like there's a, there's at a certain point, because of your relationship with the Lord, they, they think you've gone off the rails. Yeah, and you yeah. can't, at a certain point, it's like, I will die on that sword. I don't care what anybody thinks about or says, if they call me a Jesus freak, I'm like, hallelujah, I did my job. Because, yeah. because um, you know, but there's going to be people who are going to come after you, come against you, even just because of that, just because of your relationship with the Lord. Right. And so we have to learn to pick and choose and stay calm in the midst of the storm. Right. Because, well, and when you think about it, like Jesus said himself that he would be a rock of offense, that he did not come to bring peace. Everybody always thinks that, you know, that you're going to have peace because Jesus is involved, yeah. but he is offensive. If you start talking about God, people are like, you know, yeah, you know, it's like a little devotional or something. But you say Jesus and you, you know, you can see the room begin to, to scatter, right? And you know who I mean, else scatters feel it. at the name of Jesus? The Same. devil. It says he has to flee. But listen, listen to this scripture. It's in Ecclesiastes 10.4. If the anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your place for calmness will lay great offenses to rest. Isn't that awesome? You staying calm will bring all those offenses and lay them to rest. Because so many times, if you're in a situation where somebody's going to say something to you or come against you, or even if it's your own household, you know how, we, you know, that, that's who you're with day in and day out. So that's where a lot of offenses come up. That's where a lot of, you know, strife happens. But if you're going to pick up that bait and if you're going to go right back and say, yeah, but and this and that, and you're going to start a whole thing. But if you just stay real calm, stay real calm in the midst of that fence and or even give a kind word, because the Bible says a kind word can break a bone and not, not that you want to go break your family members bones, but you can you can bring a calm to that storm by you saying, you know, I'm really sorry you feel that way, but you know what? We'll, We'll just agree to disagree. You diffuse that that fire. Well, and especially when, say, for example, you're praying for someone. And I, I can remember uh, a couple of times whenever the Lord has really had me hone in on someone because, the, you know, I had such a burden. For example, my brother, and then I had another friend that I worked with that the Lord just every day would just give me such a burden for them. 
and they were giving me a hard time. You know, when I would talk about the Lord, uh, it was offensive to them. And uh, my brother would outright mock me. He would just mock me, as only a little brother could do, right? But, I mean, he, he wasn't, you know, the, and the other girl that I was praying for, she was, she was pretty equally offensive, actually. But, but the Lord did save them. But it was so offensive to them. Jesus is offensive to people because the Bible says that the gospel is like the stench of death to those who are perishing. But it's like a fragrance to those who are saved. So when someone is perishing and you say Jesus, it just reminds them that they're perishing. And that's why there's such an offense with it. But you've got to press in, stay calm, like what Nina was saying, and just don't even let it affect you. Just stay calm and keep witnessing and don't give up because you're going to offend those that you're witnessing to with the name of Jesus. Well, and you have to understand that this is a broken world full of broken people and hurt people hurt people. And so many times you can step back and say, what is actually causing this hurt and pain in that person? Do they really mean it? Or, you know, are, is it a cry for help what they're saying? Is it, is it, you know, sometimes when they're coming at you about Jesus, sometimes they're just struggling to want to know the answers themselves and they don't want to admit that they're asking about it. So they're just going to like debate you, but almost in an offensive way. And so when you come at them back to them with the word of God, you're going to be planting seeds because that cannot return void. Right. And so when you lay the groundwork, you, you just speak you know, the word to them and you tell them what God says about things and you don't pick up the offense of what their accusatory tone comes at you. So many times it's the attitude. And do you ever hear the old saying, it says, don't get mad, get even. I think we should say, don't get mad, get ahead. And, and, and be, be ahead with the word of God. You take the high road, you take the, the, the road less traveled and you, you speak that, you just go with that, from that place because picking up an offense is so easy to do. Trust me, it's been a big thing for me. Forgiveness has been a big thing and a big issue in my life because of offenses ever since I was a little, little girl. And so we have to learn to lay those things down. That's how we stay blessed, having no ought. We're going to talk more about that when we come right back. Stay right there. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. To see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten, and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to NinaAndMichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back. You're watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. Today we're talking about the prison of offense. And why is it such a prison? Because the Bible tells us to have no ought. When you have ought against somebody, you are holding on to these grudges. And then that becomes your perception. That becomes your reality. You're just, it, it, it's what you're preoccupied with all the time. It's what you're going to keep bringing up and rehearsing it and going over it. And there is a time and a place where you, you can, you know, kind of get through a tough patch. And the Bible says 70 times seven a day is how much we have to forgive. And that's not because they're hurting you 70 times seven a day, but it's because the devil's bringing it up. Yeah. But we have to learn to cut that off, to know what he's doing, to not pick up that bait, because it is so important that we lay the offenses down and we give that all to the Lord. 100%. And, and, you know, 
Jesus talks about the parable where, you know, there's the man who owed so much money and he, the, and he, the, king, the, the uh, debt collector forgave that man that owed all that money. And yet when someone owed him so, uh, just a little bit of money, he would not forgive them. He wanted to, to throw them in prison. So he ended up owing all the money again. You know, the, they, they saw that he was not going to be forgiving. So he ended up owing the money again. So if we don't forgive, we cannot be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Jesus paid it all. He forgave us of all of our sins. We are, we are gonna, when we go to heaven, we're gonna, the Bible says he has washed our sins uh, as far as the East is from the West, never That's to be them. remembered. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus did that for us. So God expects us to forgive others in the same way that we have been forgiven. Now that can be hard. You know, I mean, think about people that have, uh, have had their loved one murdered, who have, um, who have, you know, possibly been molested or raped or, I mean, how do you get over the, the big ones? You know, that's tough. Only Jesus can do that, but, but he actually can. Because haven't you seen those court cases where, you know, some great offense has happened and, you know, the, the victim or the family of the victim has, have got, they've gone up and, um, and, and like hugged mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the offender. And, and there's not a dry eye in the courtroom because that's from God. You cannot get over something where you've lost a loved one and like a drunk driver or something like that. And then there's this forgiveness of that offense once you've lost your loved one. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you get over that, right? Except for God. Well, and being a godly example in the way that people are always watching us and they want to know, a lot of people who know our stories and know us know a lot of the things that we've gone through. And, you know, I did go through um, a divorce because of adultery. And when I'm saying that betrayal like that is one of the hardest things. I have been through a lot of things. I've had a lot of things to forgive in my life. But there's a betrayal that is a hurt like none other. But I can talk about that. I know every day I had to give that to God. And I remember one day when I read the uh, scripture, and I knew that scripture, but I knew God was just wanting me to have it right then, when I saw that you have to bless your enemies. And I was like, but I can't do that. I was like literally having an argument with God. <laughs> and I was like, there is no way that I want him blessed. There's none. There's no way. And it's like, you know, you have- But you prayed it. But you, you did, I pray, did pray it. And then you were mad whenever but, he was when, blessed. When I found out that- and Actually, God you, answered the prayer. That, you were all ticked off and called me. So, and I said, you didn't really mean that. Well, no, God said <laughs> that to me. And he said, uh, you are obsessed with the judgment of the godless and I will take care of that. And all I was doing was, he was just living his life. He didn't seem to care that he had hurt me. And I thought, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna hang on to this hurt? And, and where he's just obviously, I didn't hurt him, so he's over there living his life. And so all I know is that I had to repent of that because I knew that me holding on to that first of all, it was not, it wasn't serving any good. It wasn't, it wasn't going to hurt him. It wasn't going to serve me in any way. It wasn't going to be a godly example to my children or my family in any way. It was just like hurt. And when you're hurt, it's like, you know, there's no joy. And so you hanging on to all this just steals your joy. And then, but knowing that now God has used me in so many, uh, so many times in this same area to help other women who are going through that very same thing and who know what that feels like and to help and walk them through that and to pray over them. And I can, it, now it's just a testimony. I, I do hope he's blessed. I, I don't, it doesn't hurt me. You know, when that's how you know the whole 70 times seven a day that you need to keep forgiving, keep asking the Lord, he will help you forgive because we, sometimes it's just beyond something we can do on our own. And we say, God help me in this area, 
Help me forgive these people. You give these offenses to God and you remember that Jesus was beaten and whipped and called names and he didn't even look like a person right. at and, the end of the day. And he said, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And what he went through right. was just, so we're not going through things that aren't common to man. I know that there's some horrible things people are going through. But God will take care of all of them when we give it to him. And he wants your yoke to be easy. He wants your burden to be light. And when we cast our cares and give these offenses to him, he will give you a peace. And that's what we need. When you want to be offended, you need to go find the peace. Right. And stay in a place of peace. And, you know, and, and think about like, if you ever want an, you see families that have been destroyed because of an inheritance. Oh. You know, because that's of all evil. That's the reason. The money, yeah. Mm -hmm. When whenever people grab for money and they feel like things are unfair or whatever, but this is your family. You need to try to solve this in your heart. If you feel like you were wronged, no, God can give back to you, you know, a hundredfold, a thousandfold. He's God. So don't you you just lay that on the altar. What is behind you? The Bible says forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward to the high calling of yes. Jesus Christ. And so you have to just lay down your offenses where you've been wronged. And, and, and we are going to talk more about this when we come back. We want to honor God because He sees everything you were born with a plan and a purpose. He's the God of all things possible. He's the God of all miracles. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle to see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten, and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus Himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to NinaAndMichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Hey, welcome back. You're watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. And we're talking about the prison of offense because it really is a prison that you put yourself in by holding on to a, a, an offense. It could be something someone said to you uh, that you're just saying, I can't believe they said that. It can be that all the way to some deep, deep hurt and pain that you've been walking around for years and you're not even realizing the harm and the damage that's causing And the you. heaviness. There's an oppression that comes with unforgiveness. And it can cause ailments it, and it, everything. It really can. Yeah. And, and so... I, you know, I, God knows what you think already. He knows things you don't know about yourself. And so when I have, um, you know, I've thought about different times in my life when I was so offended and not many things caused me not to sleep, but there have oh, been you, a she couple sleeps of good. nights. Yes, <laughs> there have been a couple of times I have just been so mad that I could barely sleep. And, you know, those are hard times. And so it's just like, God, you know exactly what I think. I wish I could take this, you know, anger out myself, but I don't know how. And But I'm, I'm asking you right now to do whatever you, you know, you know, and, and to do and take this out, pluck this out by the roots because I need, I need to get some sleep. 
You know, I mean, this is just crazy how upset I am. And, you know, God is able to do that. He's able to put things in perspective. You can get in the Word and, and look for things in the Word because it's, it's our toolbox. You can look for scriptures in the Word that can help you get over whatever offense it is. Because I guarantee you, you have never been hung on a cross to the point of death where they beat you with a cat of with the cat of nine tails, you know, as a whip, and and to to where you were unrecognizable. No one's ever done that to you where you died and came back, right? Yet he he did that. all of that under those offenses, and he came back to life so that you could be forgiven, and so you could forgive others. Yes. Yes, that's so hard, but it's so important. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 12, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers over all offenses. And I, that's so hard to do sometimes, but you, if you could realize, I'm going to love them anyway. I'm going to say something kind in spite of this. I'm going to overcome evil with good. And so whatever the devil's trying to trip you up with, because let me tell you, He's got your number down. Whatever has worked for you before, if this is what, maybe it's some always some person in your life that some family member or someone you know. Favorite offender. That's, <laughs> that's the chief offender in your life. You know, you're, you're gonna be so like, oh, I gotta meet with that person Stress. or that person's coming around and I'm just, and you're kind of ready for it. And at sometimes you gotta watch that, that you're not gonna just be- You pre-argue. You're gonna grab at <laughs> anything. Or, Did you hear that? Or, or, you know, whatever. You have to go with it saying, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna choose to not be offended today. I'm gonna love on that person. I'm gonna speak kind words. You know, that is how we overcome. We, again, we overcome evil with good. You take the exact opposite of what the devil's tricking you to be offended by, and you just say kindness and say, oh, I never thought of it that way. Thanks for pointing that out. Really well, don't let them have a, have a upper hand on that. Well, that's true, and you can do that what what you're saying and you know fake it till you make it kind of thing for a season or for a while but when you when you fake it till you make it and inside you're so ticked off you can barely bear it because you actually have concealed hatred God can pull that out you know, uh, because God has to do a work of the heart yeah. to get down into the, the deep recesses of your heart and pull up these offenses to where you put them all in God's yeah. perspective. And he, the Bible says that he is the balm of Gilead. That's like a medicine. He is that Jesus is. So when you begin, and I say this from personal experience, you know, the Lord has spoken to me before and said, you have concealed hatred. He said that to me. And I said, yeah, but I don't know what to do about it. I don't know how to fix that. Did That's you ever? intangible. I, and, and so I just said, God, I have to give that to you because I have no idea how to get in there and fix that myself. Did you ever have a Mount Vesuvius moment? Because I'll, I'll say oh my sometimes gosh, I it's come like, from a family, a long line of, of uh, overreactors. I, I have to say, you know, you'll stuff it down, stuff it down. You'll say nothing, say nothing, say nothing. And then you're, you erupt. And it does not do anybody any, any good. And I know sometimes when I'm having one of those moments, it's rare because it, it's like funny because my husband, like I'll get so mad at someone on the television, anything. And it's like, and then I'm spewing all this stuff and I say, I know in my spirit I'm hearing, stop it, Nina, be quiet, Nina, back up, <laughs> Nina. Like I know that the Lord is like, because you know, once you unleash these things out of your mouth, you, can't, you cannot put it back. You gotta be careful because what you say, you know, you can, somebody can tell you a thousand compliments and someone say one mean thing to you and that's the same person. And you rehearse it. And that's what you're gonna remember. And so we have to be so careful that we don't get baited into all of that evil and we're going to pray about right. and, this. And so don't rehearse it, reverse it and curse it. So let's curse pray. the offense. So, that's <laughs> right. Yes. So Father, we thank you, God, that you are the God, you're the only one that can get inside our hearts and change us for real. 
yes. to where God, we can walk in that love, the genuine love and sincere love to where that the hatred or the offense, whatever we have built up through the flesh, we ask you, God, right now to forgive us and pull this up. Help us to not have an offense with anyone, Lord. As far as it's concerned with us, we will be at peace with all men. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, make it so. Amen. 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 And we are so glad you joined us today on the broadcast, however you are watching us. We invite you over to follow us on all of our social media. We are all over Facebook, Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, Nina Keegan Ministries. We have a brand new podcast. Wherever your favorite podcasts are played, we're on there. And we are also on Rumble, so you can follow us on all of these. I also have a couple of books filled with devotions. Proceeds of those go to our uh, our affiliation with CBN's Orphans Promise. So stay tuned. We want you to hear this exciting message from Daryl Youngblood. You won't want to miss it. He's got an awesome, powerful ministry. So stay at peace. Great shall be your peace and undisturbed composure. Amen. We love you. God love bless you. you. Does science disprove God? Is there a war between science and faith? We don't need God to create a universe. There's no evidence for God, and it's irrational. Is there no evidence for God? Am I delusional for my beliefs? It is delusional and stupid. Am I brainwashed? Do I ignore reason? Logic. Critical thinking. Science. RDOF uses logic and reasoning. RDOF has empowered my sons to defend their faith with facts. If you want to be equipped to defend against the biggest objections to the existence of God, RDOF is the place for you. Has science really ruled out God? Is faith at war with science? If you want to be equipped to respond to these claims and more, check out RDOF.org. The evidence he presents is so powerful and overwhelming. Incredibly compelling, yet easily understandable. We believe in rationality, we believe in reason, we believe in science, and we believe in the existence of God. I would leave every event with a mind-boggling awe and assurance. I never believed in God. I just think it was craziness. RDOF confirmed my faith. RDOF confirmed my uh, full belief, full faith in the Lord, man. The appearance of design in the universe is undeniable. The lights, the crowd, the videos. To book a presentation or watch our free videos, go to rdof.org or find us on Facebook at RDOF Events.